Hello everybody and welcome to today's daily devotional. Have you ever been to Disneyland or Disney World? Have you had it described to you or seen it on TV? Now if your family's been telling your planned that they're going, this excitement builds within you. You start looking more at maybe what you can do, what rides there are, what, what you think, I'm going to go on that one, I'm not going on that one. And this excitement builds within you. But people have been to Disneyland before. When it first opened, nobody knew what was it was going to be like. Well, let us, we're in this Advent season, let us reflect upon what if we didn't know Jesus was going to be born? We were back in the day when we heard of prophecies, prophecies of the birth of this Messiah, of this King. And we're going to read part of Isaiah chapter 9. Now at the beginning part, it talks about actually the area the sea in the Galilee um, area where Jesus the Messiah is going to be born. Then it talks about how he will bear our burdens upon his shoulders, that he'll take the yoke off our shoulders. But it's verse 9 that I want to go to. Let me read it to you. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His his authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. This is a prophecy about the birth of Jesus, a prophecy of the Messiah coming and all the Jewish nation, but not just the Jewish, others had heard it too, knew that this would have, had been. And not just in this section, in so many other parts, other prophets had announced this Messiah was coming. So we're first told that a child will be born. So why? Why were so many people like, what, Jesus, a baby? This baby? It was told a child would be born. They just flabbergasted though. Maybe they thought part of what was shared was true and the other part was just made up by the person who shared what they felt the Spirit telling them. Well, it can happen. A child is born, a son, a son given to us. Now we reflect back because we now know what did happen. A child was born. The son of God was given to us, freely given by the father out of love for us so that our burdens would be taken off our shoulders. How wonderful, how majestic. So I'm in the middle now of, I guess, Disney World. And I found out that this is true, that Jesus, a child, was sent for us. The implication is, though, that the child would be born into the nation and for nation of Israel. And, it, and he did. He was. But our God was born for all of us. And then it talks about authority rests upon his shoulders This kingly robe rests upon his shoulders. He is a king. He has authority. He can govern. So, of course, they're going to think he's going to come in and he's going to wipe away the government that's ruling here now. He's going to be in charge. Now, we know our God is in charge. He has full authority, but he did it differently. Four names are then described that reveal his character. Wonderful counsellor. He's exceptional. He's distinguished. A counsellor. Someone who gives you the right wisdom, the right way of living, how, how to speak, how to be, how to act, how to prepare. Someone who has this wisdom. 
this wonderful wisdom that God shares with us, that Jesus shares with us. Everlasting Father. Sorry, we'll go back. Mighty God, mighty God. What, this child and a mighty God? You know, the conundrum of that. But as we know, Jesus was born as a baby. And he was a mighty God, is a mighty God, human and divine. Prophesied, but not fully understood. Do we even fully understand it now? No. But he is this beautiful baby that grew, but he was also mighty God back when he was that baby. He was the mighty God when he was a teenager. He was mighty God when he was 30 years of old, when he was 33 years of old. He was mighty God. And so they believed that this Messiah could do what no one else could do. He was going to come. Somehow God was going to come. And then it spoke about everlasting father. He's from everlasting to everlasting, forever, endless. But father, he's number two of the three persons in one. He's not the father, but he has the fatherly mission. He has the father's character. His relationship with the father is one. Remember, three in one. And he has a fatherly rule. He governs with peace and justice. He governs well. He's been given authority by the Father, the three in one. But they're talking about he's our Father. He's glorious. And then it talks about the Prince of Peace. He comes and he brings peace to us. But not just peace for the day, eternal peace. Peace that lasts forever. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace. The one who will bring and maintain peace because the people of God were now properly related to the Son of God, to God Almighty, to the Father. The Old Testament was very much the rules. Jesus comes and brings in the new kingdom. And I guess not, it's not a new rule. It's always been there, but shows us God's heart. And it makes me, when I read this, turn towards God and thank him. Let us give thanks that I'm born in an era where I understand this more, I can meditate upon what it really truly means, but I still don't understand 100%. I'm still on the journey knowing what God, who God is, what he's done. But I also then look forward to his second coming. Wow, if his first coming was so amazing and so dynamic and look what he, he, who he is, amazing. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Imagine what his second coming will be like. Wow. So in this middle of this season where we're journeying towards celebrating the birth of Jesus, the first coming, but are waiting for his second coming, let us give thanks that we can prepare our hearts for this God, this King, who will come one day again with peace and righteousness and justice. But we don't have to wait till the one day. It's available to us right now. Let us now thank the Lord that it is available, that he is available to us right now. Oh, loving Father, we worship you and praise you and adore you and we thank you that we are born in this era and understand more what the prophet was talking about. Holy Spirit, reveal to us more of what all these words mean, of who you are, of who the Father is, of who the Son is, of who the Spirit is. 
and we thank you and we await with excitement for your second coming. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful blessed day and be excited for the Lord is coming again.